This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. I'm your host, you're watching the Dean Show, and it's always, it's always exciting being back with you for another episode of the Dean Show, and we get people from all across the globe, and they come in and, and they share their story with us. They talk to us, and we want to know, why would they accept Islam? Why would they leave the religion of their forefathers, of their great-great-grandfathers, of their fathers, of their mothers, and accept this way of life. That a lot of times you get a lot of scrutiny for it, you know? You might not get invited to the VIP parties anymore. You might not get that VIP card anymore. You know what? You might even lose your job. You might even not have the same friends because they don't want to be friends with somebody who's a Muslim. But you end up gaining a whole new family of over 1.5 billion, and you end up doing something that brings you peace and happiness in this life and paradise in the next so without further ado, when we come back, we're going to be talking to Justin and we're going to hear his story on why he came to this beautiful way of life. Islam, sit tight. We'll be right back. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. Peace be with you, my brother. Peace be with you. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How's it going? Alhamdulillah. Justin. Eddie. On the Dean Show. My pleasure. <laughs> all right, all right. So, you know, we're talking about serious issues here. You know, we, we take a break from, you know, uh, all the other things that are out there, sports, football, basketball, work, and we want to talk about these serious issues that are in the minds of the more serious people because death is a reality. We're going to die, and this life is transitory. Is passing, is fleeting. So those people that are tuning in now and they're, they're they they you know they're they're sick of just all the other things that really aren't of much benefit. But this is a benefit. Talking about God, talking about the Creator, and talking about this way of life that it just makes sense and it made sense to you. That's why you became a Muslim. Right. So we want to just talk about your history and then we're going to come into why you decided to blonde hair, blue eyes, and you're a Muslim. You're not an Arab, you're a Muslim. Yep. You're American too, huh? I'm American. I'm a Texan. <laughs> yeah, Texan. Uh, so uh, t talk to us a little about yourself. Well, I was born into uh, Catholicism, and then through my experience, I looked into that and I became Christian. And, well, it was a great experience. You know, I, got to, I went to church every Sunday, and I prayed every night in the morning and the evening, and I read my Bible. And... Next thing you know, I just, I started asking deeper questions. And I never could once find, you know, where Jesus, peace be upon him, said that I am God. Or that he was going to, he, him saying, I'm going to die for your sins. So, and then at the same time, I was 18, 19, 20, and I was living the life of that age group. I was having fun, I was chasing my desires, and I was sinning. And I still felt guilty inside my heart. And it never made sense to me. Somebody dies for my sins, but I still feel guilty. So then I, I, I got down on my knees and, and deep internally within me, I always knew that there was only one God. And I would always pray, God, guide me and thank you for Jesus. And I never could understand it. Anytime I talked to my grandma or my grandpa or somebody in my family, they couldn't fully under explain the questions that I had to them. And so then, I mean, alhamdulillah, that means all praises to God. This, this journey led me to Islam, and I'm really excited to share it with how it came in, in, Islam entered into my heart. Now, if, if more people, I'm, I'm sure we're more we're open-minded, and many are. Many are, are, are seeking more substance to life. You know, they made a lot of money. Some, you know, lost the bank account, lost the wife, lost the house, lost the car. Right. So, you know, they come to a point, and they're like, all these material things, they're not just, they're not doing it for me. Or someone has all the material things, and still it's not doing it for me. So what made you, at what point in your life, were you like, okay, you just woke up and like, let me just get this Bible and start reading. You were in a hotel. They're all in the hotels. Did you start, you know, practicing Christianity before, uh, 
were, were you were you did you have like an epiphany that something 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 happened to in your life that you started to pra lead, practice f because you you were Catholic then you went to Christianity so before that were you just chasing your desires and then what led you to want to be a Christian? Well, led me to be a Christian was all my friends. Uh, I grew up in Friendswood, Texas, and all my friends were Christian. And we'd go to church on Sunday. We'd go to a place called, you know, like a church camp, and and I liked that lifestyle. I liked the the group, the team, the environment, and you know, like you said, I was that guy. I was always making money, and I was doing well with business. I had a house. I had the, ever, all the nice toys, and then it just. I just still didn't feel at peace inside my heart and soul. And all praises to God, once again, some of my brothers, they started coming to me and saying, Justin, you've got to check this out. You've got to check this out. And we were having Bible studies, and we started asking each other questions. And, and it really just took me being interested and me being sincere and me searching. Because if we're sincere and we're searching, and, we're, and, then, and then on top of that, we're trying to live the right life, and staying away from the you know the bad things, it's called fitna or the trials, the bad things. By me doing the right things and, and being sincere, all praises of God. He he led me to submitting to Him, and Islam comes from the word peace, which means peacefully submit to the Creator. And if we're gonna worship something, I figured I might as well worship the Creator instead of any of the creations. Yeah, that makes sense because Jesus, peace be upon him, he was the creation of God. We love Jesus. I love Jesus on my heart. Yeah, but he's not God. Right. So we don't want to worship the creation of God. We want to worship who Jesus worshipped. Exactly. Who, yeah. did, who did Adam worship? He worshipped the creator. Okay, who did Noah, Noah worship? The creator. And who did Abraham worship? The creator. Who did Moses worship? The creator. Who did Jesus worship? <laughs> he worshipped the one God, And the that's creator. what I'm talking about. That's who we worship. Muslims that's, worship the creator. Because somebody stumped out there. You just They were coming along. They were going along with you. Uh, God, God. Then when you said Jesus, someone would say, who did Jesus worship? Jesus? That don't make sense. Right. And who was Jesus <laughs> praying to? Yeah. When Jesus was fasting in the desert and the and the devil came to him and tempted him does the devil tempt god does it make sense does god fast no <laughs> not at all no so it made perfect sense to me jesus was a creation one of the best prophets ever made and he worshiped god he submitted to god he followed the first commandment just like moses and just like all the prior prophets they follow the first commandment and that's what muslims do follow the commandments this is amazing now did you change your nationality when you became a muslim no i'm i'm still american <laughs> Yeah, and I'm still got the same color skin. And you still say y'all? I still say y'all, and I still, you know, I go hunting and fishing, and yeah, I'm still Texan. Still good old boy. Yeah, that's good. That's right. I'm a good old boy. <laughs> but do you eat biryani? Oh, I love biryani. Yeah, and all the good Arab food. But how about? I mean, what's Texan food? What's, what would Texans like to eat? Um, you got Mexican food. You've got. I mean, we don't eat pork chops no more. Okay. Because it says in the Bible, you better not eat pork. So yeah. you know, we follow that. So yeah. my Christian's brother out there, you got to stop eating pork. What's the big change now? What's the, you know, what's the big deal? It's a big deal to worship others besides God. That's a big deal. I'll put you in a hellfire forever. If you die on that, it's a serious matter. Right. But now what's the big deal for someone looking out? You, you're just worshiping God. You know, you, you're not doing anything weird. Tell us, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, of what your day-to-day -day lifestyle's like. Well, I... I wake up in the morning, I purify myself just like the other prophets did, and I, then I say my prayers, and then I you have... You pray like this? Uh, no, I get down on my hands and knees, and I put my head on, on the floor, and just like all the prophets did, it mentioned in the Bible, that's exactly what they did. And then I have a moment to myself, I read, and then I go to work. This is what I love about it. Five times a day, I take five minutes out of my day and pray to the Creator and none of the creations and I feel a deep internal peace. I mean, that's simple. And I still have my normal life. I get to hang out, play football, play basketball. You know, I have a wife, alhamdulillah, she's an amazing girl, all praises to God. And I'm, I feel very blessed. We're, we're gonna take a break, but it's exciting too that your wife, she also was a Christian, she accepted Islam, is that correct? That's correct. Amazing, amazing. We got so much to uh, talk about. We'll be right back with Justin. For more, here in the Dean Show, we'll be right back.
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. And with good deeds, uh, we'll find that good breeds good. Clear out your mind and your heart of hatred and preconceived notions. Racism and nationalism, because you cannot have anything inside of you that's like that against people and still be successful. With them. Back here on the Dean Show with my brother Justin, and we left off. We're going to talk about. We got so much to talk about. Yeah, we do. Now, before we continue on, okay, you, you talked about your your wife. Okay, she also was a convert. She accepted Islam. And b before I ask you about that, tell us for, for the people now, okay, you know, they're listening and they can relate. They're also confused about the Trinity, about worshiping a man, you know, worshiping saints and idols and, you know, Hail Mary, give me ten of these, say these things, God forgive you, go to the priest and confession box, these things just, you know, right. God is the one who created you, God's the one you pray to, God's the one who forgives sins. Not a man, not anything in the creation, but the one God. And this makes sense. Yep. It's simple, logical. But you heard of Peter, Pepe King. You heard that gentleman? They had some kind of uh, hearings, and they were talking about mosques, masjids, the place that you, know, you go to to put your face on the ground, the same way you described Jesus putting his face on the ground to pray to God. Right. Now, what did you experience being as a Muslim now do you feel because now you're, you're you know you're you're around Muslims? Do you feel that Islam now is is something that's promoting violence? That Islam is like what you see on TV that you know it's about you know radicalization. Now you're Muslim. Next thing you know that you're going to be talking about you know uh, jihad. You're going to be trying to blow up America and blow up this building and that building. And people are scared now. Oh, a Texan. You know you rough and tough. Guns in the West. <laughs> and now you got one more you know, uh, loose cannon. Right. What do you got to say to those people who are a little scared? Well, with, without knowledge, with that lack of knowledge, people obviously tend to be scared. Like right when I told my family I became Muslim, they were like, you became a Muslim? What, are you going to go blow up something? They, they said that, They, huh? they literally uh. said that at the dinner table. When did you convert to Islam? I said, actually, Dad, I reverted back to Islam. And like a light bulb went off in the family's head. They're like, what do you mean you reverted back to Islam? I said, well, I was, we were all born worshiping the Creator and none of the creations. And I went back to just worshiping the Creator. And they were like, just dumbfounded. You should have saw their faces. All praises to God. Islam has brought me peace. First of all, we're all made out of energy, atoms, vibrations. And right when I put my head on the ground for the first time and did the prayer with my head on the ground just like Jesus did, just like Moses did. I, f I could feel my energy. I could feel, I don't know, maybe light. I, don't, I, felt, I felt peace. That's the best way to describe it. And no, it's not Islam to attack people, to hurt people, to do any of that stuff. That's, that's just what you see. That's just what you, the TV is going to tell people. They're always going to attack the truth. You know that. Look at history. You know, one with brains, one with eyes to see, just study history, and they've always attacked the truth. And what's the truth? Monotheism. What's monotheism? Worshipping one God. What's polytheism? Worshipping multiple. And I choose to only worship one God, and that's what Islam is, submitting to the one God. That's amazing because that's so true. Throughout history, you'll see that these mighty messengers that were sent by God, they were calling the people away from idolatry, from paganism, away from that to pure monotheism, and it wasn't easy. Jesus, peace be upon him, he got spit on, he got spanked, he got hit. They tried to kill him, right? Right. And he was delivering the truth. He was calling people to worship God, and people were opposed to that. Yep. Yeah. 
So now you have the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who's doing the same missions as Jesus and Moses and Noah and Abraham, calling people to the same religion, the same way. Submit to God. Do God's will. And this is what you're doing, Islam. Yeah. That's what Islam is calling you to. It's, it really is all the prophets. It's simple. They all worship God. And Jesus, peace be upon him, he worshiped God. Yeah. Muhammad, peace be upon him, he worshiped God. And that's what Muslims do. We just worship God. And we do it five times a day and it feels great. Okay, good. For, for the Texans and, and the Canadians and all the other people watching us all around the globe, you don't have no bomb here. There's no, nothing strapped to them. No it's bomb. All, it's all good, as they say, in the hood. Yeah, it's all good in the hood, <laughs> down in this wood. <laughs> all right, yeah. So we know this is silly. Islam doesn't teach any of these things. Islam is calling people to worship the one God and noble behavior and doing good. Right. So you went also and you did the fifth. You, you've already done that. You established the prayer five times a day. Yes. And now you also tell us about your experience. You went to Hajj. Oh, man. You know, in the, in the Old Testament, it says when you go to the Valley of Baca and to make your pilgrimage. So I, I saw that, but I didn't know how. And that's what I like about Islam is it teaches me the, the how. Well, where do I go? I went to Mecca, the Kaaba, the central location, the heart chakra of the earth. I went there and I saw one point. There was actually six billion people there. Or, I'm sorry, six million people there roughly. And they were white, they were black, they were Asian. They were from all walks of life, rich, they were poor, and they were all doing the same thing. They were all there just to worship God. And they were all there trying to do good deeds, handing water out, giving people dates, giving people food, you know, smiling, saying, peace be with you, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. And if you look in the Bible, peace, Jesus, peace be upon him, that's how he greeted people, peace be with you. And that's what Islam is. When I went overseas, I saw it firsthand. I never, I've never in my life, I never was a crier. Like, I was always Mr. Tough Guy growing up in this society with the culture and the music and the rap and the movies. And then when Islam entered in my heart, my family, my friends, they can all sense and feel the peace that I have. And I, whenever I hear the call to prayer, whenever they, they make a call to prayer, I cried when I was over there. And whenever somebody beautiful who was praying, I cried just by hearing it. And I, I, I put the, the, the Quran in my mom's ear. It's like a prayer on 4th of July, last 4th of July. And I said, Mom, how does this make you feel? And she listened to it. And she literally, my mom and my sister both, same night, they both started crying, just hearing God's words from the Quran. And it's peace. Going overseas and seeing that, there's nothing that compares in my mind. And I just wish and I hope that God will open up the hearts of everybody to see and feel what I've felt being able to go overseas. I took my brother Muhammad. He's the guy who kind of said, hey, he started asking me the deeper questions in life. What's the purpose of life? Where are you going to go when you die? And I took him to all praise to God. God allowed me to take him because all we are is tools, Eddie. All we are is tools. We're either being deceived or we're being guided. And all praises of God that we've been guided and I was able to take him and it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. Tell us in short before we go to break, your wife also, she's a, a revert, a convert, she accepted Islam. What happened with this? Yeah, this is great. My wife, she, um, she was like a Bible thumper, like super Jesus freak and, and her friend decided she was going to become a Muslim and she said to her friend, you can't become a Muslim. My wife was like, no, no, you can't become a Muslim and her friend said, okay, well, prove me why not. So my wife, before I even knew this girl, this is three years ago, she starts looking into Islam and all praises of God, with a sincere heart, God led her to submitting to Him alone and none of the creations. She accepted Islam. She accepted Islam. Alhamdulillah, all thanks is to God. We'll be right back with more here with Justin on the Dean Show. Don't go nowhere. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone.
back here on the Dean Show with Justin, a Texan. You were born in Texas? Yeah, I was born in Texas. Born in Texas. Okay, uh, let's just back it up a little bit. For those people, you know, the, the Donnie Bravos, uh, Donnie Brascos, and, you know, the, the women who are out there, who are, you know, people who are living this life of debauchery, you know, just really just going from nightclub to party, you know, e even, even some people get a little more sophisticated, so they might not want to go to the club, but, you know, it's just more about the wine tasting and, you know, posh lifestyle and, you know, pritzy, uh, 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 you know, just the glamour and the glitz and following all the celebrities and whatnot. You know, what, what do, do, you, do you have a chance to sit, now that you found the truth, okay, and it wasn't something that you just, you know, you fill with this ghost and you're humping and jumping and that, it was something that you, you took a, you know, uh, this is something that stimulated your mind, is it right? Right. So now how do you communicate? Do you still have some friends who are in that lifestyle? Yes. You still try to communicate to them. So for those people who are out there who are still living that kind of like hedonistic lifestyle, they don't want to talk about anything unless it's girls, boys, and the, you know, partying. Uh, partying, what time? How do you communicate to them? Well, we're all going to die. That's inevitable. And we're all going to be judged. Let's say I'm totally wrong. Let's say I'm totally wrong. Well, at least I'm living a righteous life and I'm doing good deeds and I'm taking care of my family and my friends. Let's say I am right and that there is only one God, which I know for a fact there is, and that we are going to be judged, then I'm happy to be on this side because this is the path, the straight path. Ser al tal mustakim, guide us to the straight path. And all praises of God, you know, all it takes is a little sincerity. All it takes is asking yourself alone in your room, on the ground. Ask the Creator. Don't ask any creations. Ask God. That's what Allah means. Allah means the one God, the only God. T tell us also uh, now for the people, like you had your wife present day who was against that other sister looking into Islam. So a lot of people now, when you mention Islam, uh, like your parents did, oh, you're, you're going to blow something up now, oh, you're a terrorist now. So people, they get nervous, they get scared to come out and even to... Uh, See, to go beyond this courage, finding the courage to, to move forward. So for the people that have many misconceptions, a lot of misconceptions, a lot of people fighting the truth. So for those people that think, okay, Islam oppresses women, Islam is about terrorism, Islam is, you know, backwards, barbaric. Now that you've studied it, you've sat with scholars, you've sat with people, you know, and you've learned it, what do you have to say for those people? We don't have so much time to go over, and we've covered a lot of this in other shows. What do you have for those people that ha might have this on their mind? Well, you know, just like Nike says, just do it. And that's just what I did. Whenever I don't want to do it, I just do it. And my recommendation would be just to pray, you know, sit down and take a moment. Personally, I'm 24 years old. Eddie, I wish somebody would have told me about Islam a long time ago because I've never felt this kind of peace. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. The end. Simple. Yeah. yeah. So any now, okay, you went to Hajj. You're praying five times a day. Uh, tell us a little bit more before we close. How just you know how's it benefit benefited your life and some of the the other things that you know you do in life. So people, you know, because you see, it's not it's not a big deal being a Muslim. It's something that it's a big deal because you got paradise in store. Mm -hmm. It's the true way of life that one needs to live to please the Creator of the heavens and earth. Because if you're submitting to God, you're doing God's will. That's the way God's going to be pleased with you. And it's, it's something that, that brings that, when you have peace, peace, happiness, contentment, not worshiping the, the creation, creations, not living a paganistic lifestyle, just doing good and good defined by what God yeah. says is good. So now, you know, we talked about prayer. We talked about uh, you did the Hajj and what else? I mean, is your, has, have your parents seen your character get better? Yeah. Are, are, are you more, you know, being more, con are you more conscious of God now? Yeah, uh, absolutely. You, I was tell always, us about these I was always kind of greedy because I, okay. I always had, a, you know, I was making good money. I never really treated my folks the right way. My friends, you know, I don't know what they would have said about back me back in the day. Now my, I, I help my family with their bills. You know, they're struggling. I try to help them out. I try to do good deeds. And what I love about Islam is I always have God on my mind. Whether I open the door for somebody, my intention is always in my heart. I say before I do a good deed, my intention is to please God. And that's what's important, Eddie. Just always trying to please God and having that conscious of God at all times, knowing that I'm going to be judged. And, 
you know, whether it be like somebody, some, a billboard on the side of the road or something on the TV, now I'll cover my eyes whenever I see something that I should, you know, we know we shouldn't be looking at. And it feels good to do good because when you do good, what happens? It breeds good. It breeds good. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being with us, Justin. Peace be with you, brother. Peace be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that was another person's story on how they came to the way of life that's not organized by man or men, but it's organized by the creator of men, by the creator of women, the one God, the God that Jesus worshiped. We're all going to die. You heard our guests give you some good advice. Think about death. Think about that moment when it's all over. It's finished. Kaput. And you got to leave all the material things behind. Where are you going when you die? Islam tells you the purpose of life, why you've been created. Islam tells you everything you need to do to be successful in this life. And Islam is not calling you to, to hurt innocent men, women, and children. It's not calling you to all these things that some people will try to, Pete King, Pepe King will try to have you believe. No, Islam is calling you to goodness and good breeds good. And it's all built on the bedrock, the bedrock of worshiping the one God, the same God that Jesus worshiped, that's the God that you worship, nobody else. And if you want to read the verbatim word of God, it's free. Give us a call, 1-800-662-ISLAM. And until next time, we'll see you. Peace be unto you.